We're live. Hello. Welcome back. Hope you're good. Um, we're Dan and Mike. Yep. We're here to help you with your online fitness business in any way we can. Uh, I say online fitness business. We probably just say online business now um, because it's not just about fitness, I don't think. I think it relates to quite a few things. Oh, yeah. you branching out? Well, a little side I think, you physio- I think physiotherapy is still fitness in it, but I've got um, one, of my, one of my good friends f- that I used to work with at Hull City. He's got his own physio practice and they want to do online stuff. And going really well again online physio I think is probably a bit behind online coaching um, but again it's thinking about pain points thinking about problems and struggles pain points quite literally in some cases <laughs> but yeah no in terms of like you know finding good physio stuff anyway that'll be another video for another day but um, but yeah it still counts as fitness doesn't it physio I suppose but um, mm, kind of. I think I think I think everything that we talk about to be honest I think it covers any online personal brand really it's in, it's interesting consulting that. services that kind of thing. I think it's it's interesting actually it? right so Amna's uh, uh, cousin's nephew's dog's brother. Yeah, yeah. F- no, <laughs> fella, other half. Right, he's a uh, high up in recruitment, um, like quite high up in recruitment. Like has a few teams and so on and so forth. And um, he's been watching our stuff, and um, he's actually changed what his company's doing. So. <laughs> Oh dear. We are not responsible for anything that happens. <laughs> He's actually changed. So um he watches like our stuff a lot. So he, he might watch this. But Shout out if you are. He has shown so he's only he only reports to one person, the CEO. So I think he's a director, um, but he, he reports to the CEO. Mm. Show the CEO our stuff on the oh, pages. Yeah, honestly. Fuck. And I'm sat there thinking, Oh god. Like, you know, embarrassing. And he was like, Everything that you say is just true. He was like, everything that you're saying, so in a different sector, completely true. He was like, to the point where I've actually gone and told our sales team to stop doing cold outreach. Literally, in a in a company like that, where they've got branches all over the country, big recruitment, it was like, because what we're finding is that we, we, um, we had 100 and, um, 117 new clients came in last year, and out of that, we've got three of them left. Um, because of the churn it was like and it's literally because all we're doing is just firing out cold DMs and mm. seeing who wants our business so I've actually told them to stop and he was like instead what I've told them to do is focus on improving the content making it better because they use social media yeah. making it better um, conversing with people just in regular ways being a little bit more light hearted and showing personality behind it rather than just going in for a cold thing he was like, and nurturing those relationships. And he said, I understand that it might take a little bit longer for them to come in, but I'm hoping that it's going to nurture, it's going to lead to better clients, longer term um, mm. sustainability in terms of churn rate and so on and so forth. So he's actually been watching us. St- the, the guy's the guy's not young. The guy's, forgive me for watching, you know, if you're watching, his name is Dan as well. Um, Good name, Dan. Yeah, you know, that's not me in bed with someone else called Dan. He's, he's 45. Like, he's been doing this for a long old while, and they've literally just changed. Things. So I think it, it comes back to that whole thing of it's who you know and not what you know and the network and all that sort of stuff. People know that now. And I just think that with social media, I just think, again, people have this assumption that cold outreach, again, it's just like, oh, if I message someone, they're going to reply instantly. Well, no, they're not, number one. And, and it's been it's been an, happening so often in, in the world because of social media, because of that way of doing things. And, and people want connection. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what sector you're in, what business you're in. I think that it rings true. And I think... I think personally, I think it will. This message will will apply to so many different brands, um, and it's about taking again the brand and who, who's in the brand and making it more personal. Making it people want that that touch with someone that they can go. Oh, I'm not working with this big brand. It's like no, I just di- deal directly with this one person, and that's what people want. Is they want that connection. Um, it's what we're finding with our coaching. You know, compared to again other mentorships, so people are saying like it's just nice to know it's you there, not just some other guy in the team. And I think that's the uh, the key thing is that. It, it's just baffling to me that someone like that has seen it again, has seen the principles and understands and gets what we're, gets what we're saying. And, and I think if someone like that is getting what we're saying, you should probably get it as well. Like, uh, yeah, I was, I was really surprised. Like, because obviously we're pretty confident with, with what we're doing online, online coach related. Like we know how to build online coaching and we know how to, to coach really well and so on and so forth. And then, um, cause I got no idea of how they would get their business and, uh, you know, and, and that. And then, um, he, he was just really surprising that he was like, I'm, I literally sit there 
at the start of each morning and I'll just watch you guys for like 10 or 15 minutes. And he was like, and it's just point after point after point, which is so relatable and so applicable. Like literally to the point, I'm not even kidding you, where he's speaking to like high level people and showing them our stuff. M- mad. We are available for consulting days. Yeah. Uh, if you wow. want to come in and talk at, you know. So how, at events how much like are we talking for that then? But I think it's, that is a prime example though of of, of how important it is to know someone and, and understand them as a human being as much as anything. And that's what we do on this on, on, the, on these videos is we try and get across as much personality as we can and, and some of the, the vlogs and stuff may be a little bit more jokey and less serious, but the point remains and there's a reason we do those. There's a reason I'm out there in the world. There's a reason we do the things we do. Um, but that's mad. That is, that is Because he, he, he said to me, he said, um, he said, you know the thing that you're talking about where it's like you don't need all of these followers because you only need to work with so many people. He was like, that's literally where we're going wrong. He's like, we're trying to do so much mass stuff that we're just getting in anybody, then trying to fulfill that, and then they're just dropping off. Mm-hmm. He was like, we only need a certain amount of clients to work with because then, because the way that his recruitment works is that, for example, if you've got a business um, and he supplies personnel to work for that business or so on and so forth, um, then whoever supplies the the materials for that business usually gets like the referral onto them, and he looks after the people people who do the supplies for that, and then he might get some other offshoot of the business, and that's how his things work. Mm. And he was like, "We only need a certain amount of people. We don't need to have three thousand clients. We only need a certain amount because then we'll look after all the supply chain and, and everything mm. in between for them." He was like, so what you're saying in terms of like how you nurture and build the relationships and you show personality and show that you're different to everybody else. He was like, in theory, he was like, I can just see how it works like perfectly. Well, people have been doing it in finance in London for, for years. You know, you take your clients out to football games, Schmoozing you take your us. clients out for, for, for drinks and, and, and dinners. And yeah, that's done in a little bit of a different way. And it's a bit, you know, it is a bit more like that. But it's it's a very similar thing. Is you're getting to know people. People will give you business because they know who you are and they like spending time with you. And you know, I used to know people who who did that sort of stuff in London, and and they were like, you know, the, their clients remain their friends afterwards. And then you know, you don't know where that leads in the future in terms of job opportunities and all this sort of stuff. Is that it's a huge thing in 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 person, in especially especially in London when I was training clients, it was networking was the biggest thing. And like you said, you don't network by going in and cold DM in straight away. You kind of Again, it's golf days. It's like you talk about your golf. You let the other guy win. You know, all those things, your stories you hear, but I would never let anyone win golf. That's what I've been doing. Never let anyone win. It's what you've been doing. Let, yeah. him, let me win. Um, it's that sort of stuff. It's having, a, it's having that shared interest and shared common common thing. Um, you're just doing that online. Um, this video has gone off on a tangent. That's not what we're going to talk about. We might as well just carry on talking about it. Um, in, in that sense that it, online is no different to in person. People have this thing with online and it's only just, I think it's only just coming around because we're talking about it because we're the pioneers of it. No, I'm joking. Um, and, and it is no different to, to being in person. So for example, this is another random example, but it's like when, I don't know who does this. I still don't understand the premise behind it, why it work, why people send them or anything like that. But a couple of my clients that I follow, they have a decent amount of followers and they get weird guys send them dick pics, right? I still don't get the concept of doing that. This is going to take a weird angle, right? But like, I still don't understand like the, the concept there because- Is it you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, I wonder why they blocked me. Um, people wouldn't do that in public. I like to think they wouldn't. I mean, some people do actually on the tube in London, but anyway, they get locked up. But the, the point is that online, people think they can behave differently. They think that there's some other way of doing things. Like, for, for, like a woman's going, oh my God, like will you marry me after saying that? No, they're not. In person, they wouldn't do that. And it's because they don't have the skills in person. That's why they send that because they don't have any other fucking option, right? That's how you know you're socially inept because you send those, I reckon. But like, that, that's, not, that's no way to get a girl online, right? Let's be honest. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not needed to for fucking eight, eight nine years. Not anyway. that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm about to say. I send it all the time. No one knows it. I've sent it. Yeah. <laughs> they can't see it. <laughs> um, it's that whole thing of like, behave online as you would in person. And people and coaches just don't have that. And I think businesses to a degree don't have that. They think mm-hmm. if I put out a post, people will buy. And on social media now, I think people are starting to get the grips with the fact that actually you can't behave differently. You should just behave as you would do in person. Yeah, we did a video in the members group. No, there below. was no dicks in that. Don't, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, Whoa. there was not. Just us two. Um, <laughs> two yeah. Two big dicks. Yeah. Um, in the members group, which is linked below. So no contract, 99 pounds. So. No what? 
No contract. No contract. Are they legally binding those contracts? Though? No, they're not. Oh, anyway, sorry. So. I just, sorry on that. Someone tried. So, someone tried to sign up with me, um, and they couldn't get out of the current mentoring contract. Um, and in the message they got sent, because they screenshot and sent to me. Yeah, our lawyers just have said that it's you know we need to have this in place. They don't have, and also, so, so, they don't have a team of lawyers. I was like, they don't have a team of lawyers. They're not going to come after you for nine hundred quid because it would cost more in lawyers' fees yeah. than the nine hundred quid. They don't have a team of lawyers. By the way, yeah, come on. Um, so we actually did the did a call on this. So like, it was called um, "What Are You Selling?" And uh, well, not them. We can't sell them either. What? What? Oh, don't sell them. No one will pay anything. No, no. It was called um, "It's Called What You Selling," and the principle behind the 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 video, <laughs> excellent video. Even more of them in the members group. We'll Link do below. a full we'll do a full one on it. Link below on, on YouTube. We'll do a full one. But um, it was. Um, it was basically on the long, along the lines of coaches think that they have to sell fat loss. They think that they've got to sell the outcome and talk about why you're going to feel so good with all this fat loss. They, they probably already know that they need to lose fat or want to lose fat. You don't need to sell that to them. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't be following you already. Mm-hmm. You need to sell yourself. That's the thing that you're selling. You're not selling fat loss. You're not selling the outcome. You sell yourself. You sell all of your unique selling points. And a thing that you can go away and do is do, do, do your niche, know your niches and know what their pain points are and, and why and what they struggle with and, and also the personality. But also think about your current demographic. Where do they currently go for their fitness advice? Or if they were to start coaching, where would they currently go? What would they look at? And then think about all of the reasons why you would be different to that. Think of all of your selling points. Like, What do you think we've done? There's probably only what? Maybe nine or 10 people in, in this space at the moment. Oh, mate, it's loads more of that. I think it's just nine or ten that we would, no, no, we no. would have been aware of. Nine or ten, yeah, that we're aware of, right? So what do you think that we've done? We've gone, right, okay, what does everybody else do? And what are people telling us that they don't like about those things? So think about our unique selling points over those. And those are, we're not going to get you to get a VA because some people don't like them, can't get on with them, don't work, you don't necessarily need them. We're not going to tell you to, to sell up front because we never sold up front and we don't actually think it's the best way to do things. We're not going to tie you into a contract. So that's from our point of view. We're not going to tie you into a contract because we know that you can't get out of your 12-month contract with this or that or the other. We're also not going to sell you up front. So it's really, really affordable. We're going to give you um, personal check-ins and tech support with actually us, not some other offshoot uh, of a coach that we're asking to do our job for us, basically. So what do you think of the things that we advertise? It's those things. So we're selling ourselves. We're not necessarily selling you, here's why you should get more clients and here's why you should be a better coach. Well, you know that. You know you're trying to be a better coach and you know that you want more clients. We don't need to sell you that. We need to sell you all the reasons why you would pick us, show you our personality, show you our unique selling points. So that's what you're selling. And that's only ever going to come from being yourself online and showing the unique elements of yourself, your values, your opinions, your personal traits, your sense of humor, all of the things that would make you a good fit with somebody. It's not actually the knowledge that you have with coaching or these facts that you that, that, that you can do or these recipes that you've done or these tips. It's, that's, that's not what makes someone go, oh, yes, oh, my God, look at those three tips about how to get protein in. It's not that. It's the likability factor. Yeah. The second that someone hits follow on your page, you know they're interested in what you're offering. So if you're a fat loss coach and it's clear that you've got testimonials on your page and you've got content on your page and in your bio you say something along the lines of, I work with you know, guys who want to shift 10 kilos and feel incredible with their tops off this summer. And someone hits follow, right? You know that they want fat loss. You know that they're interested in losing weight and, and feeling that way. What you now need to do, like Mike said, is then sell yourself because they probably follow another 20 people who promise the same thing. And well, they haven't either haven't found someone yet that they like enough to work with them or they just wanted to follow you and see what you're about. And maybe you can convince them to work with you. But at that point, they know nothing about you. All they know is that you do fat loss coaching that you can deliver it because you have good results on your page. So then it comes down to, okay, cool. Well, they don't need to know them whether you know what a calorie deficit is or whether you know about high protein um, food swaps or that you know that HIIT training is shit compared to doing steps. They don't need to know that. They don't need to know that. They need to know why you're the best person for them and what it is about you that makes them go, I want to work with this guy because I can see that I'm like him or I'm like her or whatever it is. It's like Mike's saying there. What then differentiates you from all the other people out there who are promising 10 kilos of fat loss in 90 days? Why is someone going to listen to you and what you say? What are your beliefs of the world? What, you're, what are you passionate about? What do you believe um, 
you know, fitness should be like? What's your version of fitness? That's the bit that a lot of coaches don't do is, is the stuff we're talking about there is like the recruiter. Well, how many people do you think get sent cold DMs by recruiters every day? A lot of them. How many people do you think get messaged by a recruiter asking them how their day's been um, or, you know, re responding to a, to a message that they've, they've, they've put on their stories or something like that? Probably none. So how can you differentiate yourself? That recruiter's gone, right, everyone else is doing this. So I will do the opposite of that, knowing it's going to take maybe longer and it's a bit different, but knowing that actually it's probably going to pay off in the long run. So same with coaches, is that they're all, obviously I follow loads of coaches, right? And my Instagram is just a wash with it. Do you know which ones I stop and watch? The ones that I know have got personality, the ones that I know are funny, the ones that I know aren't about fitness. Mm. And again, I'm not your target demographic, potentially, but maybe I am. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm a busy professional with little time doesn't want to go to the gym. <laughs> it needs to lose a bit of body fat. But it's that whole thing of like people go on Instagram to be entertained, they bored, all this sort of stuff. I can't say it enough is that you need to show people why you are different. What's different about you. That's what we do with this. It's what we do with our, with our vlogs on YouTube. It's why we believe that, that with content, you have to have your personality involved in it. You have to put it in there in, in spades. Because that's the difference. All the other mentors out there, they're not doing vlogs. They're not doing, letting you into their life. They're not sharing that side of stuff. They're not posting funny stuff because they don't think you should. So like, if, if, I were the, if I were that recruiter, and again, just take from this, extrapolate it into, into online coaching. If I were the recruiter, you look at what every other recruitment company is doing, and it's probably called outreach. It's probably stiff. It's probably no real content really going on corporate. the page. Really corporate. So what do you think you would do? If it were me, I would make videos on make fun of that. Yeah, what? Yeah, make make fun of that. Really, really serious type stuff. Or um, when someone shows up to your company, when your recruitment company sent you ten idiots or something like that, and and film a video around you know poor quality of people coming mm. through through the door, people showing in sick and stuff like that. Almost a bit of tongue in cheek that mm -hmm. gives them a different edge to every other person within that demographic, which you then starting to call out the problems with recruitment. So you calling them out gives a sense of confidence that you're not going to do that. So who would you go with if you're looking for a recruitment agency to recruit some employees? The person who's calling out a lot of the rubbish and making jokes and having a slightly different approach or the person who slid into your DMs who you've never spoken to before saying, I can recruit this and that and the other. It's probably going to be that one, right? It's the same thing with coaching. And, and also it makes you second guess then what is happening. So if you are with a recruiter then that sent you loads of cold DMs and this person's posted content saying, do you really think they're the right fit for you and your company if all you've done is reply to a cold DM and they don't know anything about your business, they couldn't even get your first name right yeah. in, the, in the message or whatever. It's going to put, even if someone is with that recruiter and they're tied into a contract for three months, it puts doubt in their mind yeah. to go, right, well, when they're finished then, I'm going to watch this guy, watch this guy's content. When they are ready, they'll reach out. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's what's going to, ha that's what's going to happen. And and you, you allude to this regularly in the videos. And even if they don't reach out, so what? It was still the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. It was still, you still did the right thing with your content. You, they may have been thinking about you. They may have not. They may be waiting even longer, whatever it is. It's more a case of like, you know that the odds are in your favor if you start doing that. Yeah. If you start doing that way and you go against the grain almost in, in the industry. And, and look, I'm sure in online coaching, you're probably going to see it go the way. And people with online coaches, they think that by saying calorie deficit, they're going against the grain. It's like, no, 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 no. Like, it's not about the... It's not about the actual thing. It's not about whether Weight yeah. Watchers is bad and has got the sins in. It's not, that's not what we're talking about. It's about the practices within coaching in general that you have to then attack and be passionate about and all those sorts of things. Like we're talking about there with the, the, the cold DMs and stuff. It's about how you create that content and go, you, again, you're putting doubt in that person's mind. And again, it's that whole thing of like, as your coach, you could say, oh, do you really think that coach who's just shouting calorie deficit at you with a million followers is really going to give a shit about you, uh, doesn't know your name, you think he really, it's really going to be personalized, you think it's really going to be this, this, and this. Well, with me, you're going to be able to speak to me directly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? as yeah, a shit example, it's, but. No, no, it, it is that. It's literally, you kind of go. What is your unique selling so, point? So let, let's, let's, let's use two bodybuilding coaches. One of them's Callum Raystrick, and the other one is, um, let's say you're a bodybuilding coach. <laughs> hard, yeah. to, hard to believe. Yeah, for dwarfs, um, maybe. Imagine, use your imagination. <laughs> for dwarfs, maybe. Yeah. Um, so, Let's just say, um, let's just say you've got um, thirty clients, and let's just say Callum's got three hundred. So Callum's advantage over you is the track record, the amount of clients that he's put through, the amount of experience. What Dan should be selling is everything I do is hands-on. You're going to get personal support from me, even daily if you need it. That other coaches can't promise because they've got too many clients. 
people with 300 clients are bound to get 30 or 40 results because there's so many of them. So when you when you look at it like that, your percentage of, of, of getting success is actually smaller. I pride myself on, on, on having a higher percentage of success so I keep my client numbers mm -hmm. um, less. And it's a, a lot more personal touch than just, you know, what yeah. somebody else might be doing. And like, like I say, you see the two different areas, the two different sides to it. And like Callum could go, well, for example, well, who have you ever put through this? And you've yeah. never turned anybody. And it's the same thing. And again, that that's the same all the way down. I think people are just getting into it in terms of attacking slimming world. <clears throat> like you see people quite often regularly attack that or calorie deficit or keto. And, and they, they attack like principles within diets, but it never really like looking at your competitors and doing the opposite of that and going, okay, well, who, if I'm targeting younger guys who want to get in shape for the beach, who are they looking at? Okay, mm. they're looking at, you know, the the Rob Lipsits, the influencers, the, you know, the Mike Thurston's or whatever, probably doing their eight week PDFs or something like that. And you go, okay, so what advantage do I have over that? Well, those are just PDF plans. You don't actually speak to anybody. You're just given a template and it's not going to work. Yes, it's only going to cost you 50 quid, but you're going to waste your 50 pounds. Then you're still not going to be in shape. Mm -hmm. Whereas you spend 150 pounds, I'm going to get you in shape because you've got weekly support, so on and so forth. And what they would have over you is they've got X amount of followers, X amount of results, how yeah. many years in the game. Again, it's just different angles and, and you need to figure out what your angle is and why you're better than your competition. Because unless you put that over, you're not going to be perceived as better than the competition. So no one's going to sign up with you. It's funny because the, the podcast I did with Gordon, actually, um, which I'll try and link in the video if I remember, um, we spoke about that very thing. It was like when you first started, he was talking about how we've grown to where we're at. And he said, you know, in an industry that is very visual um, and all about that. And he kind of <clears throat> he kind of took the piss a little bit, to be fair. And he was like, obviously he was saying, I'm on the slightly smaller side, on this sort of stuff. What was he saying about me? Uh, I won't be listening to I can't that. remember what it was he said about you. I can't remember. Um, what no. was it? But no, we were talking about how like obviously in, in an Instagram world where everything's based on image and, and based on six packs and all this sort of stuff. He said that we didn't post as much of that stuff as, as, as other people did. And certainly with me being a lot smaller. And we were talking about how even with our, within our business, we attract different clientele and how I used the advantage of the fact that I wasn't big and that I was like, well, I need to use that to my advantage. And, 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 use, and use that within content to go, well, I understand how it feels to be smaller, to feel like this, to feel like you're not as big as your mate, who's, you know, massive. Um, I didn't use the word obese, promise. Um, how it feels to train with that person and how it feels to be around that person. And I used that within my content to make sure that people who I could work with resonated with me. I was never going to attract 120 kilo bodybuilder who wanted to work with me. It wasn't going to happen. But I did attract guys that were maybe a bit busier, who had a family, who had maybe, um, I, I dare I say, more, uh, more corporate job potentially. That way of thinking, because I knew the struggles of that person. I knew because of working with, in, in London with people in person, you maybe attracted a little bit more um, guys who maybe were, again, bigger, gym was more important to them potentially. They cared more about how they looked. Naturally, that would, would have happened. And he was saying how it's funny how even within your own business, we both had our own USPs that we used and we were we were using. And I think that's the thing that, that frustrates me the most with coaches is that they, they really struggle to see how they fit in that. They really struggle to find their USP. And they, they think it is in the fact of, yeah, oh, I went to uni. No, that's not, what we t that's not what we're talking about. Like it's about your own individual circumstances and experiences that make you relatable to your, your ideal clients. So for me, I still had female clients come to me, probably resonated with how much muscle mass I've got, right? Um, I'm not a female, but I understood the struggles of someone who was busy, who did have kids. And I talked about that. So maybe that's why I had more females who did have kids who wanted to be in the gym two, three times a week rather than eight. Um, you know, they would have gone with Callum Raystrick, for example. And again, it was just that, even within what we did and our personality traits and the people we were trying to draw in, we still had our own type of client as a rule, not, not exclusive, obviously. But if you, I bet over the years, if you lined up all our clients and you looked at their build, their size, their goals, you would have had people that were slightly bigger, more, more focused on how they looked and the aesthetics. Again, not massively different, but it's, and in that podcast, we talked about just recognizing what, your strengths are and what you bring and people always go back to well i know that it's a kind of deficit support and we're like no <laughs> like oh i hate slimming world i'm really passionate about it no like that's not what we mean mm. it's it's bigger than that and, and that's you know like we talked about in the last video it requires thinking and thought it requires you to build those um those those ideas in your head of what your niche looks like and the fact you're always adding to it and you're always seeing how you fit in this industry mm. um and, and it's hard to put yourself out there out on a limb because 
we get this regularly as well for people. Oh, I don't want to alienate myself. I like working with everyone. It's like, fuck me. Like, well, you can't work with everyone. Mm. You can't. Who do you want to work with? I knew, I would love to work with 120 kilo guys wanting to get in furniture shape and look fantastic. My demographic was more the guys who were 80 kilos and wanting to lose their, lose their belly and, and feel better at work in their shirt, right? That's just more people that I could resonate with. And I think it, it, that's okay. It's just important to recognize that and know who you work with and know what you want out of it. And you can't get that from just sending whole DMs, from just randomly doing outreach. How's that gonna, of how's that gonna work? And it's interesting that like I say people are starting to see that now in other, in other fields, in other areas. I think it's interesting. Again, it's the same with the physio guys. Like it was, we did the same thing. Um, I don't want to give away like what we're doing with them and stuff like that, but there's some pretty obvious pain points with the physio, right? Which is you only go to a physio who's within what, 15 mile radius of you. That's it. When you need a physio, you literally go to one that you can drive to. You go to one who's in the local area and you go off Google reviews. Well, that works what? 50% of the time maybe? If they're half decent, you may go on a referral. Well, what happens if you could see them online? All of a sudden, then, I, like I said them in their content, then you start going, well, now you're no longer limited by the person down the road, the person who has to practice there, who your mate went to once and said he was all right. Because that at the moment is all that is available to them. Well, now, guess what? If you can create a system and some, some, something that you're doing with them where you go, right, actually, you can now see these people online and they can be experts in stuff that you don't need to be there to do a physical assessment. All of a sudden, you open up that ability to go, well, now you can work with the best in the field from the comfort of your own home. Well, that's different. It's thinking about what you can do differently to everyone else. And the people who do that are the ones who'd be, in my opinion, be super successful mm -hmm. with, with this. Absolutely. Because online coaching is still quite new. People forget that. They think, yeah. oh, there's loads of online coaches. Oh, everyone's, always, everyone's already had an online coach. They haven't. Yeah. They, just, they just haven't. Like Some people still don't have a clue what it is. It's still such a young thing. Um, it's how you can appeal to those people who haven't yet heard of it. What would you say to them? What's going to make you different? Why is it better than a PT? Oh, I get it all the time. Oh, I know I'm better than a PT. I just can't put it across. Well, figure it out. Ask questions. It's so simple though. It, it, it is simple, but again, it comes back to the whole thing. It's like weight loss is simple, but it's not easy. I think it's the, again, it's the accountability and it's the asking the right questions and thinking outside the box and spending time thinking about it without being distracted. Like I, I said this to a coach only this week on check-in. I said, I want you to spend an hour thinking about your niche with nothing else than just some, you know, some beats on, some, some, you know, wordless music. And I said, I bet you can't sit there for an hour and do it. Couldn't do it. Distracted, needed a drink, needed food, whatever, whatever. Not having a go at them, but my point being is that people can't do that. They can't, if me and you would said, right, we're gonna spend an hour. If someone said, we were mentored by someone, they said, you gotta spend an hour thinking of all this stuff. We'd do it. We would just do it. Because it, it, we would see the benefit. If we imagine if we wrote everything that our niche struggled with, and we spent an hour doing it, we would have content for for days. Maybe we should do it as an experiment, and we we'll, maybe we'll do a video on it. But it's just funny how like people are so distracted and they don't think deeply about this sort of stuff. But when you do, those light bulb moments really really start start happening. Um, bit of a tangent there, but I think it's important for coaches to realise that it's not a long time. An hour is not a long time for you to sit and think without being distracted by your phone, not be distracted by anything else. And they can't do it. Mm -hmm. Can't do it. Because it's too hard. Something to think about. This was absolutely nothing to do with uh, the video that we intended. We'll do the next one. That's, that's what we're like though. Do you know, we're just like that. We think of something and we roll with it. And, mm -hmm. But also like, but that also again, should show you again, when it comes to content creation, that if you know your niche and you know these things and you are passionate about it, you should be able to do that. That's not what we were supposed to talk about. I literally, I've got the thing written in front of us. Nothing to do with it based off that one thing we said about the recruiter with the cold DMs is that that's how confident we are with what we're saying and what we believe that we can have this conversation about it. That's pretty important, I think, for you guys to know with your content, well, you should be able to do that. You should feel that passionate about it. You should know what's unique about you because we know with us, this is what's unique about us and what we do. And we're giving it away for free. Okay. Stupid, really, but never mind. What did, um, uh, I've just remembered something. I can talk about that off air. Ooh. Yeah. Off air. Excited about that. Um, smash the whatever. smash the like button, and if you want to join the members group, where again we do calls like this every Monday. Put it on your MySpace. And every stuff. Monday we do the calls like this. Only hundred pound a month, no contracts. Um, we're going to take over the world with that membership site. So get involved now while Pinch it's cheap. The brain, so. And then, what? Who said what? Don't know. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.